Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome here for your first time, if it's your first time. I got a request to do a general purpose team building video and like how to go about the process of building a team. So I'm gonna try and cover this to where like it can help anybody at any stage in the game. Um, let's just get right into it. Typically, depending on what you're doing, right? Like adventure, it, it doesn't really matter what kind of team you're using. Um, there, there's no like necessary team. The biggest thing you want to do with building a team for clearing through adventure is just make sure you meet the requirements for over here and then beat the stage. I mean, there's there's no like special conditions that you need for adventure. You're just kind of playing through it. And the same thing goes for like unrecorded history. There's really no need for a specific team when you're farming through the story of the game. Not, not yet anyways. That, this could change in the future. So like... If you're thinking, oh, this is my team now, should I change out this unit for this unit, and you're just progressing through the story, it, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to just say that, like, from the beginning. At that point, it doesn't really matter. There are some stages, however... Actually, before we go into that, um, there are ways you can make clearing story easier, right? So, there's units that do AoE... And stuff like your, your dog walkers, your farmers, like Kron's an example, right? He does an AoE on skill one. If he has a buff, um, then there's like Vildred, which I don't know if I have a Vildred out. Might be in my um, waiting room, but yeah. Generally, a hero that AoEs to clear waves fast is is good to have for clearing through adventure. Um, if it's your first clear, then having some kind of healer, of course. It's nice. Maybe some kind of frontline tanky unit, and then like another AOE DPS, another DPS, whatever. It, or, but for for adventure, it, it it doesn't really matter what you bring as long as you beat the stage and you meet the requirements of beating the stage. And then later on, you're just gonna be farming with one AOE unit like Vildred, Arbiter Vildred, whatever you have. A solo ML can works, and then farming fodder, and that's pretty much your like team building for side stories and story and adventure and, and all that stuff that's really all that matters and then like it's kind of the same thing for the spirit altars the kind of team you bring for these don't really matter um as long as you can beat the stage and typically you want to try and bring fodder with you when you're doing these um just getting type advantage is nice in here so like for instance if i was to do this like i did a run of this earlier um, I just brought in three units to do decent damage because this one like the more you hit it. It has like a, a, a defense Buff it's Like can't be stripped or anything. It's like the more you hit it the more you wear down its defense So this is one you actually need to bring like multiple damage units to Otherwise, you're not gonna do any damage to it. And you're probably gonna die And then I have adventurer Ras here that I'm just leveling up while I was doing it and then hunts this is where it gets a little bit different, right? Because every hunt has a special condition, generally, that you have to meet. Um, they change as you get higher up. Like for Wyvern, um, the first Wyvern stage you really get to is like 10. I mean, you guys like know this is your bread and butter, right? So like building a team for this, you just want to make sure, like, try to avoid using non-ice element units. Um, there's a couple that are really good. Um, but once you get to 13, I wouldn't recommend using too many non-ice units. There's a couple that are decent, like um, General Purgus and Batiste, for doing this stage specifically. But getting to 11, like, you could probably get away with, like, not using anything but ice units. Just fine. So, because past stage 11, there's actually a, um, like, a, a negative to using non-ice units. Like, the Wyvern will gain extra... CR, which is like extra speed, and it'll do more damage to those units if it hits them. So, typically, you want to just run ice for this, right? And then you need a good front line. So, here is where you, like, I don't know. I'm losing my train of thought here. Hang on, let me gather my thoughts. So, back to the whole team building aspect. Okay, there's special conditions. This special condition is like all ice units are best, right? That's what I was talking about. Just like special conditions of stages. 
Here, obviously, all fire units are better. Here, all earth, right? Because it just gets a bonus effect for your unit not being the correct element. This one is different, however, it doesn't do that. But there's other special conditions, right? Like, let's talk, talk about Asmanic, for example. Here, something negative happens to you if you have more than two buffs. Um, something negative happens when you put more than two debuffs on it. Okay? You need an AoE to consistently clear the eggs. So, like, there's no really, like, cookie cutter one team beats all in this game. You're going to be using different teams for different things. See, like, for an example here, this is a team I use for Asmanic 13. It still says 11 over here, but... Like, you need a strip. You need a de you need defense break. Generally, on every team, you're going to want some degree of defense break. Um, I think, like, defense break gives you more of a damage boost than an attack buff will. Generally, you want both of them. Getting an attack buff and a defense break on your team is ideal. So, if you can find units that do that... Um, ideally a unit that does multiple things is good, right? So like here, every one of these units for my A13 team does multiple things. My Clary strips and provides defense break. She also provides a passive heal. My Tamarin provides a strip. She provides attack buff. She provides healing. She provides a cleanse. She provides a dual attack. She's... A very good unit, right? She, she does a lot of stuff for your team. Yuna, she provides the AoE I need for the eggs. She provides another attack buff. She provides a speed buff. Great. SSB is another source of defense break. Another source of killing the eggs. And she's my main damage dealer for dealing damage. I have her carrying Joker on this team. So, like... I have everything I want. I have the defense break. I have the attack buff. I have the AoE etc right and then for wyvern 13 it's essentially the same thing here but it's different mechanics so my team is different i don't run a healer here i run a really fat tank line or tanky front line that boosts my team up then it's the same thing here i have my two sources of defense break i have my source of attack buff in my front line unit i have my main source of damage and the special condition on wyvern is you need to land debuffs so all three of these units are able to land several debuffs so on and so forth and then yeah so when it comes down to doing like raid you have other things to consider mainly morale um you want to be able to clear your raids in the least amount of time possible so getting a team with high morale that has decent synergy works as long as you can beat the content the type of team you bring it doesn't really matter see like this team has no defense break but it's fine because I beat the content and I have a good amount of morale. Same thing here. Like, this is my highest morale team. It's not a fantastic team for beating certain stuff. But I use this in normal raid to make my uh, clears quicker. Um, it still has the defense break. It has a source of healing. has good sources of damage, right? So raid is a little bit different in that sense. Thinking about Abyss, there are certain stages that also have certain requirements. Same thing with uh, Hall of Trials, different requirements. So your team is going to be built differently for pretty much everything. Um, Abyss. So like, uh, like one stage a lot of people end up getting stuck on playing through the game is 62. It says here, he has this. When the caster is debuffed at the beginning of the turn, one debuff is dispelled, 15% health is recovered, with a 50% chance to grant an extra turn. So, this means you cannot debuff this guy. And a lot of people don't understand, like, why their team's not working is because they bring a debuffer, or you can't bring a debuffer. There's, there's a lot of stages like this in Abyss, to where like you you have to read what they do and you have to bring the appropriate unit this is why a lot of people recommend building commander Lorena because she's a single target high DPS that doesn't have any debuffs she just makes a lot of the content in abyss easy um, 
and then and that's that's really it right um, so back to like for, for building a team you just want to like first thing you want to do check if there's any special conditions make sure your team meets those special conditions like no debuffs um, you need debuffs you need a strip unit you need to dispel something off the boss um, stuff like that that's what you, you want to look at first and then build your team from there and then try and get units that do multiple things so get something that defense breaks and strips and provides passive healing like clary clary is a very good unit everyone should build her um, tamarin if you have her she provides a ton of utility for a team heal attack buff dual attack cleanse all that stuff and then yeah just just go from there like if you like the most important thing in increasing your damage to whatever content you're doing is defense break so try to get some kind of defense breaker on your team unless you just like clear through story and you one-shot everything anyways it's, it's just kind of different right so but also in the same sense if you can't debuff something don't bring a defense break to it hopefully that that becomes a little bit self-explanatory so yeah I guess that's really it. I don't. I don't know how else I could go about like saying, you know, team building kind of thing. This is just kind of like new intermediate player guide to where like, you know, this is how I go about building a team. And I guess I can recommend a couple of units, um, free to play friendly units that are just good in general purpose team use, right? So. Angelic Montmorency will always be at the forefront of that. Commander Lorena and Clary. And now Ras is actually really good. Adventurer Ras provides defense break. Now, off of this ability, provides defense buff, and he provides a strip. So he's also very good. You can fit him in a lot of teams to do really well, right? As for other three stars... There's not too many that I would just recommend coming out and building. Tyranor Guard's all, all, always great for Wyvern. Um, I use him on every single account. So, yeah. Other than that in here, Alexa's also really great for Wyvern. It's like specific use stuff. Then up in the four stars, uh, I'll stay away from MLs. I'm Furious is another great use for Wyvern. He brings defense break. Um, he brings a crit buff. Crit buff is really nice. It means you don't have to build as much crit on your units. Um, Angelica, uh, another thing to consider that I didn't mention earlier is immunity. Do you, does the, the boss or whatever you're fighting, does it have a lot of debuffs? Immunity is great for dealing with that. If it has a strip and a bunch of debuffs, generally Montmorency is a better option to bring because she brings consistent cl cleansing. Angelica won't consistently cleanse your team, but if there's like... An ability that the boss uses if it debuffs and it's on a cooldown then immunity is probably better in that situation right um, crows it's actually decent for tanking wyvern Karen's decent if you have torn sleeve I, I don't wouldn't do it without torn sleeve and then Clarissa Armin's actually pretty good for abyss she brings a poison debuff which is really powerful hit debuff is really powerful she brings mitigation, a pseudo heal, and she can crowd control adds. So she's another very good option just to have built, right? And then I won't really go into five stars. Um, typically, if you have a five star, it's probably a good idea to build it. Um, most of the time. There's only a couple that I wouldn't recommend building. But yeah, I think that's going to be it. I don't, want it just, I don't want this video to drag on too long. I just wanted to go through like a whole thought process of like building a team. So... In conclusion, it's just like, check to see if there's any special conditions, meet those special conditions, try and meet those special conditions with a unit that can do multiple things. So, if, if you you can bring debuffs, bring defense break, bring attack down, bring speed down, bring hit down, all that stuff, it's, it's nice to have, but defense break is the most important thing. Um, from there, try to get an attack buffer. You know, if you need all single target damage, make sure you're bringing single target damage. And just, just go from there. Just break down the fight. Determine what kind of team you need. And you'll progress through this game pretty easily. Well, with that being said, let me know if this helped you out. Um, if you have any other video ideas, let me know down in the comments. Generally, I'm taking my video ideas from the comments right now. So, this is something that was requested off of a recent video, so I'm making it. 
who knows? Maybe your request will get fulfilled too. With that being said, like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.